What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. Perfect. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, Cameron, disease and the brave and the bad. Yeah, hell yeah. Let's go. Yes. What a grandiose entrance. Like this oh fucking. Sean, also like you're alive. Sean, you're now frozen on my end visually, but we can hear you. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, it all goes up. wrong. We've been we've been live for two hours and twenty minutes, Cam, but uh all of a sudden it all just goes haywire. But sir, if you could please properly introduce yourself, let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now. Please plug and promote anything and everything. Yeah, so my name is Cameron Neely. Uh, I that's all my socials, the tagged all my socials. Um, I'm with the band Disease and Depraved. I do all the writing, mixing, and now mastering. But before I didn't do uh, the mastering, we'd send it off. But yeah, so the audio engineer, the writer, uh, lead guitarist and vocalist. Uh, disease and depraved from portland oregon so uh yeah here in portland oregon been here my whole life so yeah that's so you are the the brains of the band the brains of the band the glue that that does everything and and may i ask how you have taught yourself the mastering aspect to now not need to send it off yeah so well it's just a, a lot of like it's it's so much work like i i sit down and i spend hours of my time uh, learning these things and going through all of the the steps necessary that I learn off of YouTube that I can and then uh, also just really just experience the the thing that really helps me get to a point where I can get my music to sound better and better and better is just putting the hours in the time sitting there and figuring out how to make it sound better also the purchasing of new tools and uh, plugins and stuff you know, different yeah, just different plugins and tools that I might need to use that'll help me throughout the process, uh, because nowadays it's easier than it's ever been. So, um, what's your DOS? So, yeah, what DOS really system do you use uh, to do all your recording? I use Reaper. Reaper, okay. Reaper, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so he pretty much answered your question from earlier because we were wondering, like, we watched the video and we we're like, how the fuck is he playing this and singing at the same time? And if you're the brains of the band you probably played that riff what like a thousand times already so, so we play which just to just to catch you up cam we play witching hour often it's very much requested in our stream like all the time the music video for it oh. um as well as a couple other music videos awesome. of yours and that's how we were like came familiar with you and i've been just bitching wow. for the last like two and a half months like how is this band not ginormous because you're crazy talented but back to sean <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry Man. No, no, I'm just saying, like, it, it's very clear that uh, he puts in the work and he fucking knows the shit, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. So, uh, Sorry. So, oh, you're good, you're good. So, so, Cam, so talk me through, who does the music videos? Because if music videos seem that they, they, they could compete visually, uh, quality-wise, with any other artist as well, is that somebody else in the group that is doing the music videos? Do you have, like, a 9 to 5 guy that you just call? So it's actually one of our friends. We're we're really fortunate to have a solid team behind everything. So like we have a guy for each thing that we need, right? Um, I can cover bases on obviously the audio engineering and that that stuff and the writing. But then when it comes to uh, when it comes to the music videos, we have a guy like one of our buddies. Actually, two for two of our friends are really talented videographers. So um, yeah, and then of course I come up with the concepts. I, me and the band come up with the concepts for the music videos and execute them. Uh, but generally, yeah, we, we have a friend that handles all of the actual videographer stuff, the editing, you know, all that. So I want to know some some vocal warm up techniques. I love when I'm when I'm talking to a vocalist just to know, mm. like stuff you do before you step on stage. Let's say you have three nights in a row, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You guys are playing out three nights in a row. What are you doing? pre and post show to be able to scream like that on a regular basis. Yeah. So I, I've been actually trying to figure that out. I don't really have a solid routine that I do. What I've noticed lately is that just yelling is really helpful. Like just yelling in general, like very loud yelling. 
the top of your lungs. You okay. know? And it might not be the best thing for, obviously you do it, you know, in a, in a fashion that's more controlled. You're not just like screaming and shredding your vocal cords necessarily. But um, yeah, I find that that's really helpful because it's just, it breaks everything forward and it, it allows your throat to just maneuver and move the right way. Uh, Cause my vocals sometimes get stuck down at the bottom where, where the, the vibration really holds, you know, where my throat holds the vibration sometimes it's too low. So me yelling super loud can push it all through and let, let it flow nicely. So that's kind of what I do, or I'll just do high screams like to, to warm up. And I'm, I'm going to ask one more and then I'm going to send it to Sean for a couple. Uh, how, who is your guitar God and taught you to sweep and play the way you play? Are you asking me like who my idol is? Or like, cause I feel like you have a, a Dave Mustaine kind of vibe as far as being right. able to shred such and, and be a front man and do vocals the way that you do. But uh, it's different yeah. for everybody. Like who, okay. I'll ask it like this. Who made you? want to pick up a, a guitar in the first place and then who made you want to get really good at guitar well i i've been playing guitar since i was six years old and ever since then it was like i couldn't put it down so i would just sit there and play for sometimes literally hours all all day long uh once i got into middle school i kind of stopped and then in high school i picked it up again actually because of uh, instrumental artists like Pliny, Intervals, and Animals as Leaders. That's what caused me to actually really pick up the guitar again. And then I never put it down ever since. So it was like high school, I decided, I was like, I'm going to do music. That's what I'm going to do. So I dropped out. I joined a band called Ancient Burials, and I was in that band for five years or whatever before it broke up or whatever. But And yeah, so realistically, who though? Yeah, there's a lot of like... Toast and Abasi, right? Obviously, Animals as Leaders. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Yeah, I is. wasn't expecting He's that answer because the, the, the three bands you named are like very progressive, not your style of music, but it's very like intricate, mm -hmm. complicated riffs. Yeah, and then and then I'm avoiding the really nerd answer, which is that I really loved Rings of Saturn. Okay. There, that explains a little more of the, the hybrid. Sean, take it away with a couple. Yeah. And uh, well, I'll tell you what, uh, Cam. I know you're you. I was told you about the um, the hot sauce trivia portion of the show. Is there a movie or TV show that you've seen so many times? While I while Sean asks his couple of questions, I'm looking up trivia on the side. There's no way I stump you because you've seen this movie or TV show so many times. There's no way I stump you. Either Step Brothers or, oh man, Step Brothers. That'll work. Or Talladega Nights. One of those two. Probably I probably know Step Brothers more. Okay, Sean, take over. Uh, uh, I'll be back That's with good. some trivia. What's up, dude? How you doing, man? Yeah, doing. Right on. You hear me good? Yeah, can hear you just fine. Cool, cool, cool. Um, one thing that like really resonated with me with your chat with BG was that you you like mentioned that you dropped out and pursued music, uh, dude. I did the same thing. I was in my eleventh grade year, and I, and I was like, uh, you know, music is going to be my way through life, and that's the way it is. And I remember specifically my principal when I came back for the meeting was like. You know, the percentage of people that make it in music are slim to none. And I remember taking that and like really skyrocketing my drive for doing music because like the hate and, and not understanding behind that kind of voice was so astronomical to my life. So like, yeah. I wonder like in your position, and I feel like you're kind of in like the, the, the middle stage there where like you made that decision and now you're like pushing through with it, you know, like what in that moment did you decide like this isn't for me and I believe in myself enough that like I'm going to fucking do this and I'm going to make it. Well, it was actually a really interesting question because like for me, it's there's a, a pretty specific answer. And it was like, and I've had these like little tiny subtle struggles like in between the lines. But what originally the 
actual thought process that got me to decide to do it was my I, I started taking stock of everything that I was interested in. I started taking stock of everything I'm naturally like good at, right? And music was the only thing I had stayed consistent and done for my whole life. And I've the love for it has never died in me, ever. Like I've always obsessed over it and writing. Like I've always been writing music. You know, I was writing songs ever since I was six years old. So it's like I knew that this is exactly what I wanted to do already, but I didn't have the I didn't have like that like that light bulb moment, you know, for lack of a better example. But it's like I was in school and I'd tap my feet. I'd just be like drumming the whole time on my desk, like every single day, not paying a, 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 any attention to what the teacher was saying. And it was, it was just like, I started to come up with the idea. I was like, you know what? In the end, like life is so short. You literally wake up, you're a small child, and then you go through life. All of a sudden you blink and you're 50 years old and then you die, you know, somewhere after that. If you're if you're lucky somewhere after that <laughs> and so i was like okay so i'm so i'm just gonna like so l- let me get this straight so what i'm supposed to do based off of what everyone's telling me in school and everywhere else is i'm supposed to follow this step-by-step like program thing that was designed and then i find a job that like i don't really like or i hate or i like just don't care for like i don't care about it i just need to survive you know uh, and then and then I just like do that until I'm too old to be able to enjoy my life and then I die. I was like, is that is that what I'm supposed to do? Is that what the game plan is? And I was like, no way. I'm not doing that. No and way. I was like, honestly, I would rather I'd rather I'd rather literally fight my entire life chasing this goal and then die young because I fail and I just, you know, I completely just everything falls apart than for me to last 75 or 80 years just like living this really plain bare existence like I, I i just like that was the thought process in high school that got me to be like no we're not doing this it's over i'm not following this path that's what it was that's a hell yeah moment Dude. give me a hell yeah you follow know your dream you know about bro. that i know like for real like i i I fully suggest everybody to explore like what makes them fucking happy because everybody's giving them their social norms all the time. But the craziest thing that I learned with touring was that like I went full fledged into trying to like have a musical career. I I feel like I got pretty far enough in it to where I could be happy and, and walk away. And what I noticed is when I walked away, I just wanted to be a normal person. And like two years later, I was like, I can't fucking do this. <laughs> like, you're back in the band like, again. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it, with every musician, uh, we have this thing that we are like born with, you know. And it's something that we can't walk away from. It's in our blood. And like, yeah, I love seeing people fight for it and really dive into it because there's people that have that ability, and they just kind of give up to the social norms because like, yes. the, everybody around them saying. You got to do this. You got to do this. So I really respect people that really stand themselves, stand for themselves, and stand their ground, and fucking let's go. Dude, because the social the social norms are so attractive. You know, it's like a tractor beam. You look that direction, you're like, oh, I could I could have a house and a dog and a car and a and a, oh, you know, you just start looking at it, you get sucked into it, and then yeah. you know, you you quickly realize that you just don't you just don't actually give a fuck. You know, <laughs> you yeah. just don't care. <laughs> Like, you want to you do the thing that you were put here to do, even if people say yeah, don't dude, do right. that. You got to follow your heart. Plus, like, plus, like, it, I think that obviously, and I'm sure you guys would agree. I'm sure anybody would mostly agree at this point. But we can clearly tell the way that our like the way the world is, society, whatever is built, is just like it's so against our our nature as human beings. It's so it's so anti-human that it's like. We, you're supposed to have pressure on your shoulders all the time. You're supposed to be fighting for something and you're not sure if you're going to get it. Like that's yeah. the, that's like, that's where the peak of your existence lies is right. One foot inside chaos, one foot inside order. That's literally where it lies. So, uh, you have to be contending with something that's uncertain. Like you have to be fighting for something that you're not sure you're going to get it. And that like, that's the struggle. That's the point. That's where we're supposed to be. 
you know, and when you have a job or nine to five, which is fine for people, whatever, you know, I'm not, but it's like when you have a nine to five and you're just doing that and you're looking for the retirement or whatever, you're just like, you, there's no pressure for anything. You know, there's, yeah. you're really not living with any, with any actual pressure. And that's where the excitement is, is pressure, like real, like, oh my God, am I going to, am I going to really fuck my whole life up right now? Or am I going to win big? Like, let's roll the dice. Yeah. Let's that's fucking where, go, that's, dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you some yeah, trivia, uh, Cam, based on the trivia you picked. And but while you are, I hope, suffering because I stump you from either a hot sauce or, or a blinker rip or whatever you got going on over there, I want you to think about why Portland is uh, an important music scene. Please plug and promote some shows, and uh, uh, just talk about the scene over there while you, I hope, are stumped on this Step Brothers trivia question going down right now. <laughs> Dale asked Brennan why he is so sweaty. What is Brennan's Cause he's watching Because he's watching cops. Give me a hell I'm yeah. Damn it. You have seen this movie a couple of times. I'll, I'll look up something harder for the second one. Cam, pick a number one through 16. I have to do a crazy hot sauce. Um, but then I also want you to talk about the scene in your area and uh, why it's important. Yeah. yeah, and I regret to inform you I could not find hot sauce. I'm that's at, no worries. No worries. Know, I'm at work right now. One yeah. through 16. I have gasoline one... in my car, but that's not. Uh, Good. They go, go, one through, Let's go. go one through six. One through six. All right. Uh, let's go four. Number four. Okay, and then talk about Portland because I have to do some hot sauce in the background and suffer. And it is cool. the first ghost pepper one, Sean. Damn it. Ooh. Oh, I've been waiting all night for this. But yeah, so the Portland scene, I it, like the Portland scene's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, Portland shows shows up for like big acts, like they re like sold out shows in Portland are happening every weekend, you know, all the time. Uh, Monday shows. So there's a big shows. metal scene in the area. Big, big metal scene, yeah, for the big acts, national acts that are coming to town and stuff. But when it comes to the smaller local scene, it can be good, but it's really, it's hard to get, it's hard because there's so much local scene. The local scene is so big and there's so many bands playing all the time that it's just like, there's a certain crowd for metal and they're going to pick and choose which shows to go to. And it's like, they're not going to go to every show. So it's kind of hard to get that going. We've, we've had some pretty decent, you know, decently packed shows in Portland and stuff. But it's just, it's just hard. It's hard to pull off reliably. It's hard to pull off. My bad. What about your... We're suffering. We're suffering. We what about stuff? your craziest... Sorry. What about the <laughs> craziest experience you've ever had at a show? Whew. Uh, ooh, I don't know. Craziest experience. Um, I feel like I know the answer, but I just got to think about that. It doesn't have to be PG. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there was one time at a show where we did play, like, actual real-life fetch with a tweaker. But that is not really <laughs> show-related, but that was at a show. That's wild. And that was... That was, I mean, that was honestly one of the most insane moments of my life. Um, Do you guys remember bum fights? Yeah, of course. You remember the guy bling bling? Yeah. No, I can't, can't say that to you. So I swear to God, we were playing in San Francisco, right? And we were sharing like a bus kind of vehicle with a band called Come the Dawn. Um, and we walk out, we played a headlining set. So I walk out after the set. And they're like, dude, you just missed it. I was like, what's going on, man? They're like, oh, we just kicked a fucking crackhead out of the out of the bus. And I was like, oh. And then they like pointed to him, and I was like, that's fucking bling bling. <laughs> and I was like, no, dude, you, you get back up here, bro. Get him back in here. Up, <laughs> yeah, dude. I was like, you don't kick that that guy out. Like that's like the fucking most infamous like homeless man in the world. Um, but that was a, that was a crazy experience for me. That is funny. 
I got one yeah. more one more Step Brothers trivia, and I think this is a much harder question. So we going mm -hmm. we going to attempt it one more time. It's very rare when I when a guest I'm not able to stump a guest at all during an interview, and I'm talking like seven mm -hmm. or eight hundred interviews, Cam. So here we go. This is the hard one. Okay. <laughs> Derek mentions that he couldn't make the wedding because he was fishing with famous people. I'm going to read four names, and one of these famous people was not mentioned by Derek. Mark Cuban, Derek Jeter, Jeff Probst, and Chris Daughtry. Which of those four was not a, a, a person that Derek says he was fishing with? I'm gonna go with Chris. We got him! Oh. Derek Jeter is the correct answer. He does not say he was hanging out with Derek Jeter. Ah. So we you got you. Find some ketchup packets and suck in or something. <laughs> nah, he's good. He's good. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I don't. I like I said, I just have gasoline, and that's not really. Like I literally just have a jug of gasoline. Well, don't do that. We don't want that. We don't want that. We need, we need more good tunes coming and flowing. Please uh, plug right. some stuff that you guys got coming up in 2024, and simultaneously answer if are you guys looking for label deals? Is there something that you need help with to get the band to the next level that we may be able to help out with? Oh man. Well, I mean, so before I go into the 2024 stuff or you know, for the future in terms of labels, I don't know. We don't really want to, we kind of originally started out where we, we just want to be independent and do everything in house. But then we also kind of, I've been thinking, we're like, well, what if we just like what we really need that would really bring us, I know it would to the next level would absolutely be some sort of booking agent that has good connections or somebody who can get us on bigger tours. Like Sean, not Sean really you, you know a guy, don't you? Tour. You know, you may know a guy or two, Sean. Yeah, something like that. Somewhere around there, yeah. We'll talk to him after this and we'll see if we can send send a connection your way or two. But continue, sir. That would, that'd be incredible. That'd be incredible. But it's like uh, that or like getting a, maybe getting a part of a label where we just let them take control of touring you know something like that because i know there's some there's different contracts and there's different things you can do with labels so it's like i think i see the appeal for going after a label or signing on to a label just for that reason just for for the touring like the touring is because we're ready to drop everything and go i don't care like i like any job i have doesn't matter i have no ties to anything i'm like we're all in the same boat we're ready to go so it's like we just need to get on some big tours. You know, obviously I'm not expecting huge, massive tours, but just like bands that are actually packing out like decent sized venues, you know, get on some, get on some bigger tours than we're able to do ourselves. Right now we book our own tours. Like we're going on tour for uh, 12 or 15 days, uh, September, this September. So labels, we're going to Labels through. love hearing that stuff, by the way. They love, they love hearing that you guys are... Uh, can DI dude, honestly, you don't need them but but they help and and I'm sorry Sean continue no I was just saying honestly if I was you I would I would start shopping for managers um sometimes managers can get you in the right hands number one number two they also have the ends with several bands that they already manage with different tours different booking agents so they have a bigger reach sometimes I feel like that yeah. might be a great stepping stone for you guys, honestly, because it just takes the right manager finding you, and they will put you where you need to be. They'll put you with the right booking agent, and they'll put you with the right label. Yeah, that's that sounds great. I mean, that would be – yeah, that sounds even better than going – say like seeking out a, a label and trying to get on it. Like that sounds like exactly yeah, what we need because we, we do our own music like – we do our own engineering. We do our own everything. So it's like we really don't have any use for connections besides, obviously, tour. Just touring. Like yeah. that's that's it, man. Like that's all we really need. So that's it's such what, a that's big pot, though. Yeah, it's such a big pot that like sometimes just having that name 
in that in that pot that can get your name in there too, that's really important. Right. So just yeah, find yeah. somebody that can fucking represent you. You know, you guys will have yeah. a good future. You weren't able to plug the 2024 rest of the stuff coming up. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So we have a lot of plans. So we're at, we're, our second album is fully already done. It's been done for a bit now. Um, we're it's ready to go. We is just it, are you shopping we it just or need. is that why it's it's on hold? So we're 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 gonna release it. Well, we want to wait a little bit. Yeah, we want to wait a little bit because we just released this album four months ago. So like we we want to give it some time to breathe. As wait 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 wait. Hold up. You, the first album dropped four months ago, and the second album's already completely done. Yeah. Yeah. That is impressive and yeah. not what I, normal I, bands do. That's that's you guys are working. You're hungry. Well, something yeah. Well, something that I do all the time. I'm constantly writing music at all times. I'm always writing music. Like it doesn't matter where I am, like at work or walking around. Like in my head, I'm always writing riffs in my brain or like drum patterns or vocal patterns at all times. And then when I'm at home, I'm writing music and getting it down on the computer and everything. So it's like, there's never a season I'm not writing music. I'm writing music all the time, constantly, every single day, all the time. So it's like, it never stops. So it's just like that. I had, like, we had like over two hours of material that we cut down to like 45 minutes. And then we took out some songs and replaced them with even newer songs. And then now, so now we have the out the second album. It's not ma- quite like the full master isn't quite there yet, but it's like it's done. It's written pretty much. So that's that's a thing. But the, the main damn. thing that keeps us on waiting is the main thing that keeps us waiting. Because I started writing this album as soon as this album, uh, Irrevocable Sentence of Torment, was dropped. As soon as it was dropped, I immediately was like, okay, time to write the second album because we need to get ahead of the curve. Because the thing that we did wrong this time was by the time we dropped this album, we like we had this whole huge marketing plan that we were going to do and we weren't able to complete. We only were able to complete 25 percent of it. So because we just dropped it quickly because we wanted it to get out there. We're like, okay, our first album, we need to be here. We are right. So we need to get that out there. But so for this album, we wanted to get done early so that we can build up a budget a marketing budget. We're going to do a lot of different things. Um, we're going to do two to three music videos for this new album. And like, you know, lyric videos, playthroughs. We're going to get a whole archive of content created first and then cut up all the shorts, all the things, and release it. And once, So once we release the first, you know, song with the music video, second, third, and then, and then commence the entire marketing plan that we'll have, uh, running paid ads and um, just promotional stuff, whatever, wherever we can. We want we want to at least have we want to have five grand to put into the marketing for this next album. So that's why we got it done early, Hell so yeah. we can focus on the marketing part. The marketing part's going to take longer than it took to write the album because we're because we want to really come up with where our money can be the best, you know, spent like to spend it the best possible i think that's smart that's a that's a fairly decent budget more than i would say most bands probably put into marketing we've got time for one one or two more serious questions each sean do you have a final serious question for for cam oh shit um you already asked his i can go first if you want me to go first yeah yeah you go first yeah Cam, I want to know a, a mistake that you've made. Either it, it could have been from disease, it could have been from burial. A mistake you made in your music career that you don't want a band that just formed right now in the garage to make. It could be something you invested in that didn't do anything for the band um, as far as like growth numbers. Is there any advice you can give to a band that's just starting off? I would say like, I would say the biggest thing is like to not to 100% don't avoid social media and learning how it works. Like it's, if you don't have that tool, like you just forget about it. Like just, just forget about it. Like you got like have that tool these days, like 2024 right now. Like that is the most important thing. The other thing too, don't cheap out on your music videos. Ancient burials, metal band. We did a music video and it was just it was just not good we didn't put any time into it 
We didn't put any money into it. We didn't even promote it when we dropped it. Like we literally just released it to the world and then never did anything about it. I think one of us posted on our social media that the music video was out and like it got liked six times or something. But like, like that, like put your put effort and time into the into the music video, into the music videos and the music. If your music sounds like shit, nobody's gonna want to listen to it. So it's like, uh, in terms of the production quality, right? Yeah, uh, you know. And um, I would say, I would say, lastly, lastly is definitely getting your music to the point where it's actually really like as good as it can be, you know. Like, and I'm not saying my the music I write is not as good as it could be, right? It could be better. There's always room for improvement at all times, every corner. But at the same time, like people writing music, a lot of times, like they might not understand like certain. Uh, ways to structure songs or or how to make things like hit harder so the biggest thing that i would always stress to people who are just like starting to write music or as a band or anything like that is 100 percent like write write at least like a hundred songs write a hundred songs and by the time you pass 100 songs your music is going to be way more developed way better than your first ideas because uh, your first your first ideas in the beginning, even your first twenty five songs you ever write in your life, you look back on those twenty five songs when you're past your hundred songs, like, dude, what was I thinking? So like, you want to get your music. After all, you're a band. You're making music. Like, get your skills to the point where you can make like your music is really starting to sound mature and much more developed. Um, that's yeah. That's the other thing that I would really say. No. So uh, what would your dream, like if you guys were to go on tour, what would your dream tour be? Dream tour? Like anything's possible? Anything's possible. Like realistically, but like, yeah, like a dream. A dream tour. Well, it'd be like a, it'd be like a world tour, of course, playing the giant stadiums. That'd be so incredible. Um, as far as bands to play with, man, I don't know. Two, five, five. Well, four, Five. including you. So, so this, this would be like three mega huges, and you guys are opening every night on this tour. Yeah. Three mega huges. I would say like, I would say like Slipknot, uh, Lorna Shore, of course. Um, granted, I liked Lorna Shore in the Tom Barber era more personally. For sure. But uh, but they're just so massive and big. It'd be so exciting. And we used to, we used to even, because they've come to Portland all the time. We used to smoke joints with those guys, like, in the, <laughs> like you know, playing, when they used to play smoke in the garage the places. Like back, like back when they were absolutely nobody. Like we would just like hang out, you know. And now is, they're just like. Is your pen that you ripped that you ripped once or twice during this interview? Is that a THC pen? No, this is nicotine. Okay, I was just seeing if you wanted to yeah. get get down one time before. My man's oh, trying to get before him before the before the boss DUI. comes calling. <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, dude, just go hit this pen and drive home, boy. <laughs> but I'd say, I'd say, just to finish it off, just to finish it off, I'd say, yeah, like Slipknot, um, Lorna Shore. I would love to go on tour with, uh, like Spite. Yeah, I love but Spite. So all of those much. bands I that you love. mentioned don't sound like you guys. I love all of those bands, but I feel like you're arguably the yeah. heavy. Well, maybe not Spite, but arguably like the heaviest of, yeah. of the ones you just mentioned, with the exception of Spite. But but uh, that would set the crowd off, bro. Right in the beginning, right there, that would be a nice little opener, for sure. Yeah, dude. It, I mean, it, dude, the next album is even is so it's like way, the next album is like way fucking heavier than this one so it's like it's like by a long shot like it's it's a very different style a different feel (laughs) it's like we we still hold true to the same like extreme death metal styles and stuff like that the blackened deathcore styles a little bit but we really are exploring a much more modern version of our same sound that we had here because the sound we have here for irrevocable is it's not very modern, you know. I would say it, it stands really well with like 2000, like 15 to 2017 deathcore. It stands really well in that in that area. I w- I would say, but this this next album is like a much more modern approach to the same sound. It's a lot heavier, and and the vocal ranges that I choose and stuff, I do a lot more. There's just everything is turned to ten, you know. I'm gonna need you to inbox me that. 
whenever you had a chance. Oh, dude, yeah. We, dude, yeah, we, we, we're sworn to secrecy. Down. We promise you we won't, you yeah. know, yeah. ruin anything. Yeah. We, we want to help. We want to help. But I, I want to know if there's some if there's some progressive take me on a journey inter intergalactic like animals as leader sections on the second album. Not exact, not exactly, but it's like it's it's there are some seriously awesome like I love it. It's like my most proud thing I've done so far. There's some pieces of like really like big melodic songs with just like it's just beautiful and then just heavy, you know, like takes you through that that loop of like heavy, sad groove, you know, solos, shreds. There's a lot of shredding, you know, it's like a lot of huge breakdowns, but um, no, inbox me on Instagram or Facebook at Cameron Neely. Find me on there. You already have me on there, but uh, uh, yeah, just inbox me. Shoot me like your email or something. I'll I'll drop you guys some some teasers. I'll okay, cool, perfect, stuff. perfect. Cam no, I want the song. I want the song. <laughs> we're gonna leak it to the world. No, we're not. But uh, Cam, really quick, I wanna I wanna shout out somebody in chat that has been pumping your music for like two or three months. Their chat name is Death by Tampon. Which I know is a little bit funny. It's a, a gentleman. Nice. If, if he ever attends your show in the near future and says, I'm Death by Tampon, do me a favor, buy that mother a beer or two because he is working. He is pumping you guys as hard. That's how we even heard about you. And he made sure I heard your music like six, seven, eight, nine times in a row to the point I was like, who is this band? I got to talk to them. Why are they not signed? Why are they not so big? They're fantastic. So do me that favor, sir. And oh it, man! And if it's okay with you, are we are we able to throw this on YouTube tomorrow morning? Can I send you the link late tonight so we can promote the interview? Dude, yeah, do whatever you need, man. Absolutely. Awesome. Hell yeah! Put well, it everywhere. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You got to get back to work, so we're gonna let you go, sir. But this was a lot of fun. Thanks for sharing some insight of of how you became you, your music, uh, about the al second album ready to go and. I know it's coming soon, but it's all a timing thing. Hopefully that budget comes sooner than later, bro, and good things are going to happen, man, for sure. Dude, I love that. Thanks for the time, man. Thanks for the invite. This was fun. You guys are fun to talk to, so this was, this was great. Sorry I couldn't have hot sauce, by the way. Ah, it's okay. No <laughs> big deal. No, I'm glad I got to stump you one time, though. <laughs> you, did. you did a good job. I did. Ladies and gentlemen, Cam, Disease, and the Bride! Give me a hell yeah! Enjoy your day, sir. Thank you again.